Hello everyone out there on Facebook Live. Uh, welcome to another one of my live videos. This is State Representative Rob Martwick and it is Monday, August 20th, 2018. And uh, as many of you know, um, property taxes have been the subject of a lot of discussion lately. Uh, we got our bills recently, we got our reassessment notices here on the northwest side of the city, not in the suburbs, but in the northwest side of the city. And a lot of people saw big dramatic increases in their property taxes or proposed assessments. And so there's been much talk about what are some of the things we can do about this. So I've done three other videos on this where I talk about the problems, the nature of the problems. I explain property taxes. I go through some of the nature of the problems. And as I promised, I would eventually come along with a video series of what we could do to relieve property taxes. So one bit of good news, if you are a homeowner in Cook County, uh, because of a bill that I passed that increased homeowners exemptions and increased senior citizen exemptions and expanded the eligibility for the senior freeze, if you are a homeowner in Cook County, uh, you are saving an additional $225 per year. Now, it does not solve your property tax problem, but it's a little bit of relief, and that was a bill that I passed. If you're a senior citizen, you uh, save about $450 extra per year thanks to the exemption increase, and now more people, more seniors will qualify for the senior freeze. So that was good news. That was actually real property tax relief, which is pretty rare, right? Um, and so today I'm gonna to talk about three ideas that are out there that would actually attempt to lower property taxes, right? Not just sort of address with a little extra relief. Relief is good, but, but how do we really uh, get a hold of this pro problem? And I, I will tell you, I agree, property taxes are our number one problem in the state of Illinois. Debt and property taxes. Debt is what cause, causes our tax problems, and property taxes are just unfair. And the reason that I say that is that if you live on the northwest side of the city of Chicago, or anywhere in Illinois for that matter, and you're a middle-income person, if you ha should have the good fortune of watching your property values go up, well, that's great for you. You're worth more on paper because your property is worth more. But that doesn't mean your income went up the same amount that your property taxes went up. And th that's not fair. I mean, we there are enough struggles in, in middle class and working class and poor communities to not have rising property taxes force you from your homes. So we need to address it. So let's talk about three ways, right? So the three things that we talk about um, that, are, that have been on the table most, right? These are the three ideas that are floating out there. There's a freeze. A freeze would say, we will freeze the amount of money that the government levies. Two is a cap where we say, we will cap the amount of the property tax bill. It cannot exceed a certain dollar amount. And the third is a swap. And this is where we say, whatever the property tax bill is, let's replace some of the money that's in the bill with money from another source. So I'm going to run through this, and I'm going to run through it quickly. Okay? Um, you probably don't believe that, but that's okay. Uh, number one, let's talk about the freeze. This is something that Governor Rauner campaigned on, that we would do a property tax freeze. If you've watched my videos, you will know what I think of a property tax freeze. Number one, and there's only one word that describes it, it's phony. It doesn't lower your property taxes. It doesn't actually even freeze the government. It's only temporary, and it's arbitrary, okay? So what they would do is they'd say, we'll freeze a certain portion of the government spending, but but we won't, but, but you're frozen regardless of what your past has been. So if you raised your property taxes last year by 20%, well, we're freezing your levy. And if you lowered them by 15%, like the Chicago Park District did, Park District, I think, no, no, excuse me, City College has lowered theirs by 15%, we're freezing you anyway. And it's like, well, if they were responsible, right? So it, it's, it's, it's phony, it's arbitrary, it doesn't really solve any problems. So let's just dismiss that one right off the bat. Forget about the freeze, it's a waste. The next one is the cap, and the cap is interesting. What the cap says is, we are going to cap your tax bill at a certain amount of the value of your home. So one of the ideas that's been floating around, and it's very popular at this political time, is we're going to cap property taxes at 1% of your fair market value. Meaning, if you had a $300,000 home in Chicago, your tax bill would now be capped at $3,000, 1% of your fair market value. Well, that sounds good because in Chicago and most of the areas around Cook County, you'll have to look if you're outside, but this is my area, so I'm going to speak to what I know about. In Chicago, the average home 
the tax bill is about one and a half percent of fair market value, right? So if we cut it down to one percent of fair market value, you would be cutting 33 percent off your tax bill. Well, that is without a doubt a reduction, right? Sounds good. But there's another part of that. Businesses are at about four percent of fair market value. Four percent. So if you limit them to one percent, then you've reduced their tax bill by 75 percent. Well, good for business, right? But what's the actual effect of that, right? Because when you start making cuts that dramatic, imagine one-third of the property tax bill just cut off. Not replaced with anything, just cut off. And then 75% uh, of the businesses. That's overall a 52% in property tax revenue decreased arbitrarily. So let's talk about what's on your tax bill, right? Police. Fire, schools, trash pickup, as I mentioned, park district, city colleges, and, and Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. These are all services, right? Um, so if you did this, if you decreased 52% of the property tax revenue that's on the total amount collected, and we're going to, I'm just for sake of argument here, this is the city of Chicago. If you live in Norwich or Howard Heights, you can figure this out on your own, but that would cut out of the governments that operate about $3 billion. $3 billion, okay? That's a 52% decrease in property tax revenue. You can do this just like I did by looking up their budgets. That would translate to a reduction in 43,000 jobs. Now, let's put that in perspective. In the city of Chicago, there are 13 thousand police officers. Thirteen thousand police officers. Okay. So if you fired every single police officer, you'd still have to fire another thirty thousand people. And nobody would ever suggest that. Not me. When I knock on doors in my neighborhood, I hear that we don't have enough police officers, and that's why we have people stealing uh, uh, the catalytic converters out of the bottom of cars and breaking into people's garages and breaking into their homes like they did to mine. We need more police officers, not less. But when you cut $3 billion out of this, you're basically creating, basically, if you're just looking at it from workforce, you're, you'd have to fire two-thirds of the workforce, two-thirds of the police officers, two-thirds of the firefighters, close two-thirds of the school and lay off two-thirds of the teachers. Now you'd be looking at about 60 kids per class, not a real constructive learning environment, especially if you're going to send your kids to CPS. Oh, and yeah, remember that trash pickup thing? Well, cut trash pickups by two-thirds. So now you're looking at basically getting your trash picked up once a month. Good luck with those rat problems, right? So th the real problems, right? Now, if you think that there's $3 billion of waste in our local governments, um, that, that's fine. Maybe this is a, a plan that you'd adopt. I, I personally don't think that. I, I don't think we have enough police officers. By the fact that we have 34 kids per classroom in CPS, I think we could use more teachers. Um, I certainly don't want to cut back on trash pickup. Um, I certainly don't want to be able to flush my toilets less. That's Water Reclamation District. They process your wastewater, what you flush. Imagine if you cut their budget by two-thirds and they couldn't handle that. That would create real problems, right? Um, so so this is arbitrary. Um, and, and realistically speaking, would we fire two-thirds of all of these people? No. I mean, that's one way to solve a $3 billion hole. Um, but government is largely people and debt, right? So we have huge debts to our government pension systems, you know this from watching some of my videos, that we need to pay back. So another way that you could solve this is maybe fire only half of them and then stop putting money into their pension funds. The problem is, is that the police pension fund is funded at about 26%, the fire is at about 24%, I believe the schools are at about 48%, and the municipal funds are at about 30%, 32, 30, somewhere in there. So as soon as you stop making contributions, well, then you're talking about defaulting on pension plans, which means perhaps municipal bankruptcy, which means a lot of retired police officers, firefighters, teachers, and municipal workers would be looking at pennies on the dollar on their pensions, right? So, you know, it, it, there's no doubt it would make a dramatic reduction in our property tax bill, but the question that you have to ask yourself is at what cost? And the key here is the reason that this is, doesn't work is because it's not done with math or money. It's done arbitrary. How do we make massive cuts to save money? I don't think that's the best way to go about it. I really don't. There are better ways that we can lower our property tax bills. And so let me just go ahead and, for the sake of argument, let's get rid of that cap. That is a terrible idea. 
So what's left? We've got this idea out here called a swap, and this is something that I'm a proponent of. And the idea behind a property tax swap is exactly what it says. We'll take some of the money that it costs to fund these things, and we'll swap it out with money from other sources. And here's the key, right here. 65%, okay? Roughly, somewhere between 55 and 75% on average. This is what the school portion is of your tax bill. Look it up, right? CPS, if you live in Chicago, it's about 55%. We're actually low, 57%, I think. But you get out into the suburbs, and this dollar climbs up, right? And so something that's been talked about for a long time, it was talked about by Don Clark Netch and Governor Jim Edgar um, back in the early 90s, but it's never seemed to gain traction, is the idea of swapping out the cost of education, getting rid of the education expense from your local property taxes and replacing it with money from an income tax increase. So how would that work, right? So again, what we do is we increase income taxes, Increase income taxes and decrease property taxes. So are there any plans that do that? Actually, there was, and I filed one. And what it said was we would drop in the income tax rates of the state of Wisconsin, which are pretty reasonable. They start out at 4, and they end at 7.65 for all income over $265,000. Right? So 4 to 7.65. Actually, reasonable and flat. Um, and it would raise $5 billion. We currently spend $8 billion on education, but that's structurally underfunding it. So if we took four of that money, that with the $4 billion, and we put it in, we would be able to increase education funding from the state level by 50%, 50%, and we would be able to reduce the burden on property taxes by an equal amount, $4 billion. A $4 billion decrease and property taxes would be the biggest decrease in the history of the state of Illinois. So you got to ask yourself, if we could do this where we swap property taxes, increase income taxes, lower property taxes, and now with a much dramatically lower property tax bill, when middle class, working class, and poor people, when the value of their homes go up, they don't get these massive tax increases. Once the income tax rates are set, when do your income tax rates go up? Well, they go up when your income goes up. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? The property taxes move whether your income goes up or not. So, so we do a swap like this. And so you have to ask yourself, if people looked at this and said, gosh, this would be a more fair way of funding schools, right? There's no doubt the more we fund from the state level, the fairer it is. And now the tax burden on middle in, and middle income people on down is tied to their income, not to their property taxes. That's a good thing. So who would be opposed to it? And you know, that's, that's interesting because if you take a middle income person, right? So let me just put this out here, right? So middle, let's say, we'll say 85,000, 85,000 income and a $300,000 Home. Okay. The property tax swap would raise them by about eight hundred and eighty-five dollars, and it would reduce them, reduce their property taxes on the three thousand, three hundred thousand dollar home, by about twenty-two hundred. That would be a roughly fifteen hundred dollar savings, right? That means the middle income taxpayer. Making eighty-five thousand dollars in income, owning a three hundred thousand dollar home, would get a fifteen hundred dollar tax break if we funded schools from income taxes and lowered the property taxes. But, so again, you say, why would anybody be opposed to this? Well, let's let's use Governor Rauner as an example, okay? And Governor Rauner has a one hundred and eighty-eight million dollar income, and he lives in a four point five million dollar home. $188 million in income, $4.5 million home. That would reduce his property taxes by about $40,000 a year. $40,000 a year property tax decrease. So why would he be opposed to this? Well, the imposition of those Wisconsin income tax rates would raise his total bill by about $1.6 million. Okay? So here you go. Middle income, 
Police officers, firefighters, teachers in the city of Chicago could see somewhere around a $1,500 savings if you own a home and you're paying property taxes. Governor Rauner would add $1.6 million in higher taxes. So it's funny that he goes around and tells everybody that this plan is bad for the middle class. It's not. Not only that, a property tax decrease, like the swap where you actually pay for it, would decrease the property taxes for every business in the state of Illinois, including small businesses and medium-sized businesses that are out here in our neighborhoods. These are the people that are driving our economy. Every single one of them would save money, and it would be good for business. There's only one class of people that a property tax swap would be bad for. And they're the people telling you it's bad for you. So that's my ideas on property taxes. We can do an arbitrary freezer cap, which does nothing but costs us. Service delivery, it costs people their jobs, it's going to bankrupt our pensions, and it just doesn't work. Or we could go with a swap, where we raise income taxes and we lower property taxes, and for everyone on the middle on down, you will save money. And for the wealthiest people in our state, you will contribute more. And that makes our system more fair. A fair property, a fair tax system, and lower property taxes, and a lower burden on the middle class. It can be done, and it's what I'm working for. So that's it. That's how we lower property taxes. I thank you for your attention and your time. As always, if you have comments, questions, concerns, or you want to debate this further, by all means, reach out to me. I'll be happy to share with you some of my math, um, how we came up with these uh, sort of numbers, but... This is it. So um, thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm State Representative Rob Martwick.